in this season, am I, am I working while I'm waiting? Because sometimes when you've done all that you can, that's the time. Now, now because I, I, I prayed all I can pray, I've sold all I, I can sow, I've cried all I can cry. Now I'm waiting while I'm waiting. The only thing left now is for God to send the rain. Some of y'all in that state right there, I done did everything. Now, now, now I'm just waiting on you to send the rain. I can't blow this. The only way I can blow this is if I take my seed out the ground. And I'm not doing that. So now I'm just waiting on you to send the rain. Hallelujah, Lord. To wait is the action of staying where one is or delaying action until a particular time or until something else happens. An action of staying where one is or delaying action. You got nothing to do. Until a particular time or until something else happens. I'm waiting until the harvest happens. 2 Kings chapter 4. The Bible lets us know that the wife, verse 1, we started verse 1, that the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. You know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all. I ain't, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing. I don't have anything. I have nada. I'm short. I'm broke. I'm done. I'm I ain't, I ain't got, she, ain't, she ain't got nothing. Your servant has, I, I, I don't have nothing at all. She probably used the double negative and said, I ain't got nothing at all. The servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. I don't have anything except this small jar of olive oil. That's, that's all I got, but that's, that's really nothing, though. Elijah said, go around and ask all of your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, pour it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said, to her son, bring me another one. Hey. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, Elisha, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Hallelujah. So I got a little bit I may not have a lot, but, but I got a little bit. Y'all don't want to have no. I may not have a lot, but I got something. Mm -hmm. I may not be rich, but, but I have something. Don't count me out because I got something to give. May have been divorced, but I still got something to give. May have been kicked out of school, but I got something to give. May have been in prison, but I got something to give. It's still something about me. May have came from a bad situation, but there's something about me. May have been abused, but there's something about me. May have been molested, but there's something about me. May have been on crack cocaine, but I still got something. I still, it's still something about me. <laughs> oh, my God. Hallelujah. Let us I want to share a couple of things with you. Um, a couple things with you on the day. Oftentimes, people shy away you have different sects of Christians or, or, or Christians who have different views about particular passages of scripture and so you have 
what some call liberal Christians and you have what some call conservative Christians. And more conservative Christians believe that liberal Christians are into what you call the prosperity gospel. And so not that you can't prosper because the Bible talks about prosperity, but a lot of conservatives believe that there's a sect of people who has abused passages of scripture with word of faith movements and not that you can't have faith, but it's just, it's, it's, it's you take scripture out of context. Meaning that you, you take a certain scripture and you build an entire theology or an entire uh, denomination off of one passage or a couple of passages of scripture without looking at it in its whole context. Saying that I, I can't take this one scripture and if I just read this scripture without reading the scriptures prior to reading this scripture or reading the scriptures after this scripture, then I can pretty much get it to say what I want it to say. But when I read it in its context and look at what it says prior to that scripture and after that scripture and, and even in other chapters in, and I have to compare scripture to scripture, then I can really understand the context and what the writer was saying with this particular particular passage of scripture. And so you have, have, have people who have said, I'm, I'm going to shy completely away from prosperity. I'm not going to even talk about prosperity because there are some preachers who have abused the gospel and have abused um, scripture for personal gain and said that I'm, I'm going to use these scriptures for me. It's a preacher by the name of I See Money. He sold his, his hair for money. He said, I cut my hair, I give you these locks of my hair if you send a donation of no less than $25, $50. Not a real preacher. It was something that we did, we put together, but we really communicated about that's how some preachers operate or, or you can sell this or I'll give you my handkerchief and, and you know, send me $50 for a handkerchief that I pray for. I put oil on this. And so some people have perverted the gospel. And so you, you, got, you got those who, who call themselves conservatives say, man, I'm, I'm not even going to talk about prosperity at all. I, I'm not even going to deal with it at all. I'm not, I don't even want to touch it because if I touch it, I don't want to be associated with those that have, have manipulated the gospel, those that's caused uh, the poor, who's played on the poor, or those who don't, who don't have resources and played on them and, and, and really didn't teach them about stewardship but just taught them to give, 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 give. And they gave, 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 and gave, and they were broke, and they went bankrupt, but they were still giving, giving, giving to the church. And they weren't empowered with stewardship and what it means to be a steward of resources, financial empowerment. And so they, they stay far away from us. So we're not even going to talk about those scriptures. I mean, we're not going to talk about faith because people have abused faith and they've taken scripture out of context. So we're not even going to deal with it. And then you have those who say, man, y'all don't, you, you don't believe in anything. You don't, you don't have faith in, 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 in Jesus said without faith, that we're possible without faith, it's impossible to please God. Or the word of God said it's impossible to please God. Those who come to God must first know that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we can't discredit what the word of God say about faith and we can't discredit what the word of God say about prosperity. But sometimes it's a hard, it's a hard pill when you, when, you, when you understand this side and you understand this side and you know what it says about prosperity. But so many people have pimped people and preachers have pimped people. And so do you, do you teach it? Do, do, do you talk about it? And yes, we, we, we have to teach it. We, we have to talk about it. And I want to talk a little bit today about it with you because I believe if we don't talk about it, then you robbed of what God really want to do. So some people don't, I don't want to deal with it at all. We're not even going to talk about it at all. You just give and that's, we, we, we're going to keep it there. But I believe that it's, that it's deeper. It's not a, it's, it's somewhere that God, in, in, in the middle that God want to do some things and listen to this particular passage of scripture that's, that many have taken out of context and some people intentionally take it out of context. Some people don't, didn't really know what it meant but, and, and sometimes you can look at, well, since we belong to God and we have the spirit of God and he's our father and we have the same authority so you just have to be 
very careful about certain passages of scripture. Romans 4 and 17 says, and this is Apostle Paul said, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead. He is the God, y'all, who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. And you may have heard some people quote scriptures and say, girl, call those things that are not as though they were. But the word says God who gives life to the dead. It is God who calls into being things that were not. So, so I can understand when, 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 when he's given us his spirit, he's given us the authority of his spirit. So we can call things that are not as though they were. And, 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 and you just got to, you got to be careful when you try to force his hand and make him. And so sometimes we walk away depressed and we walk away and, and we see, that, man, it's years and things that, and, and it has not come to pass because maybe it hadn't come to pass because we hadn't got his proper context of what, the scripture truly meant. And I believe in confessions and I believe in standing on his word. I believe it with everything in me. I believe in speaking his word. It's powerful. It's awesome. And he does what his word says that he's going to do. But you have to understand the context. The Bible let us know about this particular widow and, and her husband passed and he he was, a, he was a, a, a man of God, and he was a part of this particular school, and we believe that Elijah was his teacher, and he was this, a part of this school, and, and he was taught by Elijah, but he died. And the Bible doesn't communicate how he died, but we just know that he died, and he left his family in a bad situation. He left them in bad shape because, obviously, maybe they didn't have any insurance, or maybe the insurance ran out, or whatever took place. They were at the point where his children were getting ready to be taken as slaves because his wife didn't have the money to pay off the debt that they owed. So the woman of God went to the man of God, Elisha, who represented God. He was a, a prophet of God. He was a great prophet of God, one of the greatest prophets to ever live. He succeeded Elijah, and we talked about Elijah on last week, so he succeeded him. And she came to Elisha, who represented God. Elijah replied to her, how, how can I help you? What, what is it that you want? So it's as if God was speaking, how, how can I help you? Tell me, what, what do you have in your house? How can I help you? So the first question, what is it that you want? How can I help you? What can I do for you? What do you need from me? How can I not do something for you, but how can I help you do what you want to do? What do you want? How can I help you? And then he said, T tell me what, what, what you got in your house. Your servant has nothing at all. Because you can imagine how she may have been thinking, and, oh, my God, I, 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 I don't have anything at all in my house because... She sold everything that she had. She probably sold her sofa and sold all of the clothes and sold everything. And her boys were getting ready to be taken as slaves. So she was probably uh, hysterical and, and going crazy. Man, they're getting ready to take my boy. I don't have anything in my house. Your servant has nothing there at all. She said, e except a small jar of olive oil. That's all. A small jar of olive oil. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is God starts with what you have. Well, when God does things, he, he often starts with, with, with what, what, what you got. What you want from me? Now, what do you have? He's an empowering God. Don't just ask me to give you the promotion. What do you have? Don't just ask me to give you the blessing. What do you have? Don't just ask me to give you this. What, what do you have? What, I want to know what you got. What, so God starts with, 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 with what you have. She was hysterical, but, but it, didn't, it didn't break Elisha. It didn't keep him from, from, his, from, from keeping his composure. He said, what, what do you have? 
because he knew God and God could have done it quick, fast, in a hurry, could have just blessed her with abundance. She could have just woke up and she could have had everything that she needed. But God doesn't work like that often. God want to know what is it that you got? David, what is it that you have? You getting ready to fight Goliath. David, what is it that you have? Well, I got these five smooth rocks and a slingshot. That's what you got. That's what we're going to use to defeat this giant. Moses, what is it that you have? Well, I got this rod in my hand. Well, that, that's, that's all I need, this rod. That's, that's what I'm going to use for you to do what I'm getting ready to lead you to do. What is it that you have? What is it, well, well, widow woman, what is it that you have? Well, well, I got these two mics. I got these two. Well, that's it. I'm, I'm going to use those two mics right there. You give those two mics because there's something that you have. What is it that you have? I got two pieces of fish and five loaves of bread. But we got all these people that don't know where about how many people we got. What is it that you have? We got to feed all these people. But I want to know, don't worry. What, what, what do you have? Whew. What is it that you have? What is it that you have, Samson? Because your enemies are coming after you. I ain't got nothing but, the, but this jawbone from a donkey. That's all I got. Well, we'll use the jawbone from a donkey. But I want to know what is it that, that you have. That's the first point. The second point, you must release what you have to God. Because once, once, he, he, once, once he show you that you have something to give, now you got to release it to God. So what, in other words, he said, what seed do you have? What is it that you have? What gifts do you have? What talents do you have? There is something about you. What did I put in you? What, what is around you? Because it may be the very thing that you need you already got. So you must release what you have to God. John 12 and 24. Jesus says, verily, truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. So, so he was talking about, he, he was giving us an agricultural example. In other words, he was saying, a seed in your pocket does no good unless it is in the ground. Now, he was talking about his life and talking about that he has to die, and, and it's better that he die. And, and when he die, it's going to be good that he die, and, and he's sending his spirit, and God, he's getting ready to do something awesome. But, but he also spoke to us in agri agricultural terms, and what he communicated as well is that unless a seed of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it can't do anything. If you have a seed of a, 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 a kernel of wheat in your pocket, and it does not die, it does not fall to the ground, it will stay only that kernel of wheat. But if it dies, then it produces more seeds. So if it falls to the ground, if, if it's buried in the ground, if it's buried in the soil, then it can produce more. But if you keep the seed in your pocket, how can it produce anything else? The widow had what she needed. He said, what, what is it that you have? Well, I, I, I don't have anything. Now, you got something. What is it that you have? Well, I, I got this. This small oil, this small jar of oil in my house, that's, that's, that's what I have. That's what you need. So God said, I'm, I'm going to use that what you got to bring about that what you need. Moses, God, when he talked to Moses, he said, what's that in your hand? Because Moses felt incompetent. Man, I can't even talk right. <laughs> And he felt incompetent. He said, what, what's that in your hand, Moses? Well, it's, it's this rod I got in my hand. Put your rod on the ground, Moses. Put the rod on the ground and it turned into a snake. Pick your rod back up, Moses, and it turned back into a rod. My God. I'm, I'm going to use that rod, this rod that, that you're walking around with, this, this rod that just looks like a stick, this rod, this rod that's, that's weak, that's powerless, that's dead. It's a dry stick. I'm going to use it in a mighty way to bring about what I'm trying to do. And with the same rod that Moses was using to get around with, God used that rod to turn water of Egypt to blood. He used that same rod to bring forth the plagues of frogs, the same rod to bring forth the plague of lice, the same rod to bring forth the thunder in hell, the same rod 
that blew in the plague of locusts, the same rod that parted the Red Sea, the same rod that caused the Red Sea to come back together again. The same rod that when it came back together again, it drowned Pharaoh in his army. He used the same rod to bring water from a rock in the desert, the same rod to raise up in the air over the Amalekites and he received victory. The same rod. He said, what's that in your hand? I want to use that in your hand to bring about what I want to bring about in your life. Look at somebody and say, what's What's in your hand? And oftentimes when we keep what's in our hand and we don't give it to God to do what God want to do with it, we hinder what God really want to do. Somebody said, everything I hold in my hands can hinder my life, my walk with God, my family, and my church. If those things are not yielded to the sovereign control of the almighty God. It was Jesus getting ready to feed the 5,000. It was a boy who had... Two pieces of fish and five loaves of bread. What, what's, in your, what's in your hand? So it was just a chicken, a fish dinner when it was just in his hand. But when he gave it to God, then Jesus was able to multiply it. And he fed over 5,000 people, 5,000 men. Many believe it was 10,000 people or more than 10,000 people because we knew that it was 5,000 men. They weren't even including the, the children and the kids. So it was only a two-piece fish dinner. Without God, but when he put it in God's hand, God multiplied it. Who? So it's nothing when, when it's in your hand, but, but, but God can multiply when you put it in his hand. Moses the rod is nothing but a walking stick when it's in your hand, but when you put it in God's hand, he can use it to part the Red Sea. Samson, this jawbone is nothing in your hand but a, but a dead animal's bone. But, but when, when you give it to God and, and you operate in the strength of God, the same jawbone that you picked up can cause you to kill 1,000 enemies. He killed 1,000 people with the jawbone of a donkey. When we put it in, in God's hand. So, so put this oil in my hand. I don't have but a little oil. Give me the little oil that you have. We talked on last week. With, with the, the widow woman and, and her child was getting ready to die and Elijah said, look, what, what you got? All I got is this little oil and, and some flour. Bring it to me. When I'm getting ready to prepare a meal so I can feed my son before he died, bring it to me first. She brought it to him first and it multiplied. Because in her hand, it was just one meal. But in God's hand, it fed the entire family and the prophet for years. So it's someone we say, God, I'm, I'm going to give this to you. I'm not going to hold on to it, but I'm going to give this to you. Because I believe that you can do more with it than, than what I can do with it. Because I can buy this, but if I give it to you, you can multiply, God, then I, I, can, I can keep on eating. Whew. Jesus, uh, Mark 12 and 41 through 44, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offering were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many people, many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth it only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus, come here, y'all, y'all, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Jesus said, truly I tell you, the poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. And you don't think she's going to be blessed beyond measure? All she had is what she gave. And it wasn't nothing, it was worth two cents. But it doesn't matter. These people put in all their riches and, and the Pharisees and they was writing the big checks and they were smiling because they were putting in a whole lot. But all she had was worth two pennies. But, but because she gave out of her poverty, she put in more than anybody because it was a sacrifice. And it's when you're giving a sacrifice. It's like a sacrifice of praise. It's like when you praise God when you're going through a storm. 
See, it's easy to praise God when you get a new car. It's easy to praise God when he sends the breakthrough. It's easy to praise God when he brings you out of a terrible situation. But when you say, in the midst of my storm, in the midst of what I'm going through, in the midst of my trial, in the midst of this, this depressed state, God, I'm going to lift up my hands and say, hallelujah, Lord. God, you hadn't brought me out, God, going through a tragedy right now, God. But I'm not going to allow this tragedy. I'm not going to allow what's going on in my marriage. I'm not going to allow what's going on in my finances. I'm not going to allow what's going on in my health. I'm not going to allow what's going on with my children to keep me from lifting up my hands and praising you, God. I'm going to be like Jehoshaphat, God, in the midst of the battle, God, in the midst of the trials. I'm not going to wait until the battle is over. I'm going to shout now, God. I'm going to lift up my hands and say, hallelujah. It's something about when you praise God in the midst of of a trial in the midst of a storm so it's something about when you give and you really don't have it to give and you say I'm still gonna give it because she said I can keep she could have said I could I could keep these little two cents at least I'm gonna eat I'm, I can buy some bubble gum I can buy some chew man chews or whatever I can but now I'm gonna give this to God and Jesus saw her heart oh yeah she yeah 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 I got it. it's something about this woman right here it's something about her I'm gonna do something amazing in her life so the third thing, we got to work what God gives us. So God starts with what you have. This is what you got. This is what I'm giving you. You want something from me, but it's something that you have. There's a gift that you have. There's some resources that you have. There's some time that you have. It's something that you got. So now that you have what you have, I'm, I'm compelling you to release it to me, to give it to me. Because there's seed in your pocket, and it's not going to produce a harvest as long as it stays in your pocket. You just have a fat pocket for that day. But, but, but if, you, if, you, if you plant a seed, then I can give you a harvest. So you must release what, 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 I, what I give you. And then after you release what God give you, then you got you to gotta work it. You got to work it. You got to work what he gave you. You got to work what you got. Because sometimes we, we have things, but we don't, we, we don't work what God gives us. So we just expect God to do the work, but it's a partnership. Faith without works is dead. You, you got to have faith and you got you to work. And God said, I'm going to do my part. It's, it's, I got to have Jesus. I told you about that. I got to have Jesus and I got to have grind as well. Some of you got Jesus, but you have no grind. You save, but you have no work ethic. You save, but you're inconsistent. You save, but you're lazy. You save, but you, 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 you don't have anything in the ground. If you die, you're going to heaven. You are going to heaven because you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But you have no uh, no get up and go about yourself. You have no hustle. You have no, 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 no fight. You have no, regardless of what happened, we're going to eat. Regardless of what happened, we're going to make it. Regardless of what happened, I'm going to get out of debt. Regardless of what happened, you don't have that type of grind. And some of us got a whole lot of grind. Man, you go, you're a go-getter, but you don't, you don't have Jesus. You're a go-getter. And some of you know some people like that. They go-getters. They got grind. They got hustle. They make a lot of money. They cutting hair, making a lot of money. They fixing cars, making a lot of money. They do doctors and lawyers are making a lot of money. They got grind. They, they in insurance. They selling. And they making a lot of money. But they, they don't have Jesus. And you're wondering, how is it that they making all of, of this money? And, and I got the favor of God on my life. And I'm really not getting any money. God, it seems like you're blessing them and you're not blessing me. It seems like they getting promoted and I'm not getting promoted. And see, the thing is, is that... They have grind. And the thing is, is that they, they operate a law who Jesus said, that's no respect to person. It's seed time and harvest time. So I'm not going to say, oh, oh, because you know me, then I'm going to give you more. And because you don't know, I'm not. If you are working your behind off, there's a harvest that's coming for you, whether you know Jesus Christ or not. So you see some people prospering even though they don't know Jesus, even though they're doing work for the devil. They can be drug dealers. They can be strippers. But it doesn't matter. If they work in it, if they grind it, then you'll see them seem as if they're prospering. Now, they ain't going to heaven. But they got the cars, the houses. They look good. They post on Facebook. They're going out of town. They're traveling. But I believe that there's, that there's a place that, that God wants us to be. I want you to have Jesus, number one, but also I want you to have grind. 
Because if you got Jesus in grind, something amazing is going to happen. If you got Jesus and you working and you tilling and, and, and you fighting and you going, something amazing is going to happen in your life. And, and oftentimes we, we, don't, we don't have that. So we Christians in the workhouse, but we lazy Christians in the workhouse, and we at the bottom of the totem pole, and we get frustrated and discontent and mad and angry because you got to report to this supervisor that don't know Jesus, or they said that they know Jesus, and they talk like they don't know Jesus, they live like they don't know Jesus, they act like they don't know, they dress like they don't know Jesus, and you got to submit to this. And maybe because they, they have a little extra um, they have a little extra grind. And God said, I want you to have me, but I also want you to get some grind about yourself. If the widow woman did not have any grind, then her kids was not going to eat. If the the widow woman didn't have any grind, then the kids was going to go into slavery. So she, she, she knew God. Her husband knew God. She knew who to go to. She didn't go and sell her body. She went to the man of God because she assumed that the man of God had answers. And when the man of God said, look, what do you have? She said, I don't have anything but, 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 but this little, this little, this little jar, this little jar of oil. Well, 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 use that. And he said, go to, to every house that you can go to as many, and borrow as many jars as you can borrow. She took herself. She took her sons. She went around the neighborhood. She knocked on doors. She sat out in the car. She tweeted people. She Facebook people. She inboxed people. She sent emails. She sent text messages. She did everything in her power. She said, look, man, I need these jars because if I don't get these jars and I don't eat, I'm not going to sit on my behind. I'm not just going to say, God, don't provide. God, going to do it. No, I'm going to work my tail off because I got to eat. Yes, I got God. But I got to have some grind about myself. I got to have some hustle about myself. Sometimes I can't say, well, you know, I just cut off at 930 and I'm going to spend time with my. No, no, no. Sometimes, baby, I'm going to be to bed at two o'clock. I'll be to bed if I'm if I get to bed. But sometimes I got to work all night. I got to turn this oil on because we got to eat and something going to happen. I know what God has told me and I know what he's promised me. And we're not going to get it with me sitting on my behind. So I got to have some grind about myself. I, I wish I can just talk to y'all today about grind, but we got to keep on going because some of it, because that's where it is. You, 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 you don't have any hustle. You don't have any grind. And God want to stir some stuff up in you because you just, you're going to do the bare minimum. I'm going to come in at five and I'm going to leave it. I'm going to come in at nine. I'm going to leave at five. What time is it? It's 448. So I'm getting ready to leave at five o'clock. No, no, you ain't going to get promoted like that. God, you know, you, you, you got to say, look, man, I'm here early. I'm here late. And your supervisor see you operating like that. Your supervisor, you, you, you a clock watcher. 448, you, you ready to go. You got your car bagged in and you ready to go. So, uh, 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 449 here. Uh, I'm, I'm heading out the door. I'm here. Uh, 458, I am gone. No, no, no. You'll never get from. You got to say, look, I'm here. However long it takes for us to get this thing done, however long it takes, I got some grind. We're going to make it. I work this place like I own this place. I'm not just a worker here. I'm not just an employee here. I am an owner in this place. And because I'm here, this place going to be blessed. What do you need? I'm an owner up in this junk. I got some got some grind. I got some grind. Maybe she went back to school and, and got her degree and, and I just, well, you know, maybe I got my degree or I got a couple of degrees and they don't even have a degree, but it's something about, and I, I, need, to, I need to learn, what is it about this man or what is it about this woman? This widow woman had grind. She knocked on doors she said, man, look, y'all, I'm going to get some. She probably kicked in some doors, Hayes. <laughs> my, my kids got to eat. My, look, 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 look what the Bible said. Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. She didn't have so much pride. Well, no, I ain't, you know, <laughs> now I'm not into sales. <laughs> now, I don't do windows. Why they ask me to do the restroom? Why they want me to mop the what? Oh, Y'all don't have no church today. Yeah. You, you're too big to do the restroom. You're too big to mop. David. You're too big to clean up the dung. You're too much, David, because you're anointed as the king, and God getting ready to do some stuff in your life. You're too big to clean, to, 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 to wash the sheep. You're too big to do the small task. If you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many things. God said, I, I want to see how you handle this small stuff. I want to see how you handle the small task. I want to see how, how well you fetch and go. I ain't nobody boy. Okay, that's cool. 
Ain't nobody gonna be telling me. Yeah, that's why you stand where where you are. She she said, I'm going. It's not it's not too much for me. My kids gotta eat, and I'm keeping my seed in the ground because my husband planted a seed a long time ago, and, and and I know God and we know God, so we're keeping it in the ground. So doing something illegal is not an option. Selling myself is not an option. So I'm going to the man of God. Go around and ask all your neighbors, not some of your neighbors, all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. My God. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour oil into all the jars. And each is filled. So, so she, started, she started working what she had. She started working the oil that she had. She started working the influence that she had. She started working. I, 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 may, not, I may not have a degree, but, but I got some knock, knocking on the door skills. I got a wrist. Y'all don't have no church. I got a wrist. Y'all don't. I, I may not have a degree, but I got a wrist. My, my wrist can bend, so I'm going to knock on the door. I, I may not have a degree, but I got a finger. My finger can push this door. I, I may not be that articulate, but I can ask somebody, can I borrow some jaws? There's something that I got, and God going to use what I got to fulfill the purpose in my life. I ain't got to look outside of what I don't have. He's not going to hold me accountable for what I don't have. He's going to hold me accountable for what I do have. There is something in you. There is something that you do have, and I want you to use that what you do have to accomplish is what I want to accomplish in your life. Push, push, push the doorbell. Knock on the door. Go in the backyard. Cut a hole in the roof. You see when Jesus did things and God moved in, in the word of God, it was the woman with the issue of blood that she was crawling on the floor. She was crawling. Maybe God said, I want to see your faith. Maybe God said, Terry, I want to see your grind. I, 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 see, I see your faith, sort of. I, I see your faith, but I want to see your grind. Because sometimes you show me your faith by your grind. You show me how bad you want it by, by how hard you grind. And I'm not talking about just grinding without Jesus. I'm talking about you're first, and I'm doing this in your name. I got to get to you, the woman with the issue of blood. I got to crawl, and I got to get to you. I got to get to you. I got to climb up in the tree so I can see you, Jesus. I want it bad. I got to get to you. If I got to cut a hole in the roof so I can get to you, I'll cut a hole in the roof to get to you. How bad do you want it? Faith without works is dead. You can't say that I just want to be healed, but I ain't never going to the doctor. I want to be here, but I'm not taking my medicine. I want this from God, but I'm not doing anything. I want the harvest, but I'm not planting the seed. You got to plant the seed. You got to trust God. You got to move. You got to start working. You say you got the faith. Show me your faith by your works. You say you got faith. How much faith do you really have? Whew. Show it to me by, by your works. Show it to me by, by what you're doing. She went, I humiliate myself. Whatever I got to do, I knock on these doors, whatever I got to knock on, so I can get to my kids so that they can eat. And she did her part. She used what, what, what she had that was the little jar of oil. She used what she had that was her mouthpiece. She used what she had that was her little wrist. She used what she had that was her finger. She used what she had. We don't even know what all she, she did, but she, she went and she borrowed all of these neighbors Empty jars. So don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. And, and they went in and shut the door behind them and, and pour oil into the jars. As each is filled, put it to one side. So they pour one and they pour two and they, they pour three and they continue to pour. But the Bible doesn't know they only had a little oil. So how is it that they continue to pour all of this oil? <laughs> However much faith she had, that's how much provision God had. Because the Bible let us know that when she had the last jar, there was no more oil. So, so maybe if she had some more jars, there could have been more oil. So God said, how, how big is your faith? And how big your faith is, that's how big my provision is. I want to do it, but since you had 24 jars, then I'm going to give you 24 uh, 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 containers of oil. But it didn't stop pouring. All she had was this little bit. And she had the little bit, and now she had a lot. And now she had to keep on working to go and sell what she had. And she went and sold what she had because it was a partnership. God said, you got something, and I got something. I'm going to use what you got, and you use what I got. You got a seed, and you got to sow it. I'm going to do some stuff under the ground, and I'm going to work under the ground. There's nothing that you can do about what happens under the ground. 
Now you can till and you can do some things, but, but, but it's, something, it's something scientific. It's something that I've done underground that, that you still don't understand. That farmers don't even understand to a certain degree of what I do underground. So you do your part and you plant the seed. See, I can't work underground if there's no seed. So your part is to plant the seed and my part is to work underground. And my part is to, to, to produce this harvest. It, 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 it's, it's your job to use this little oil that you have. It's your job to get out of the house and borrow everything that you can borrow. It's my job to provide the oil and to multiply this little oil that you had. Then it's your job, y'all don't have no church, to go out and sell everything that you had. And then it's my job to give you still some leftover after you done sold everything and paid off your debtors. So I'm going to take care of you. But it's a partnership, and we got to work this thing together. But some of you are sitting over here doing seed time and not doing anything. God said, you ain't, you ain't working with me. You ain't putting nothing in the ground. You, you, you ain't got nothing in the ground, but you're expecting me to work. You, you're not sowing anything. You're not working the ground. You're not tilling the ground. You're not operating. You're not watering the ground. You're not doing anything, but you're expecting me to work. And I want to work, but you're not doing anything. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to this right here. Listen to this. This the Bible let us know. In Genesis, my God, it's my God. I really don't even want to go into this because this is going to bless your life. And, and I don't want to go into it because I don't want to do an injustice to this. So I'm going to give you a little bit of it. Genesis chapter 26. Now there was a famine in the land. Besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerah. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, don't go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Now Abraham went down to Egypt when there was a famine. And Isaac was the son of Abraham. So there was another famine. And God told Isaac, don't do what your daddy did, even though I took care of your daddy when he went down there. But I want you to do something different. Don't, don't go into the land but go to where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands that will confirm the oaths I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and will give them all these lands. And through your offsprings, all nations on earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything. See, A Abraham did what I told him to do, so you do what I'm telling you to do as well. Then the blessings are going to follow you. Abraham did everything I, everything, Abraham did everything, uh, obeyed me and did everything I required of him. Keeping my commandments, my decrees, and my instructions. So as we go to verse 12, it says, Isaac planted crop in the land. One translation said, Isaac sowed in the land. <laughs> Isaac sowed in that land. He planted crops in the land. In the same year, reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. Y'all don't want to have any church. Isaac planted crop in that land. Well, what land, Genesis, did Isaac plant crop in? He planted crop in a land that was not barren. He planted crop in a land that was experiencing a famine. He planted crop in the land when it didn't make any sense for him to plant crop in his land. It don't make any sense. While everybody was going other places, while everybody was leaving the land, while everybody was saying, we're going to pull our money out, while everybody was saying, it is stupid to plant in this crop because this crop is not producing anything. He said, I'm not going to be concerned about what other people are doing. I'm not going to be concerned what naysayers are saying. I'm not going to be concerned how other people are pulling out. I'm going to do what God has told me to do. And I know it may seem silly, it may seem stupid, but I'm going to sow in this land because God wants me to sow in this land. He want me to be in this land. And since I'm in the land, I'm going to sow in this land. And the Bible said that he received a harvest that same year. Y'all don't want to have no church today. The same year he received a harvest in the land that was barren, in the land that experienced famine. <laughs> Verse 13. The man became rich. Oh my God. The, the man became rich. And wealth continued to grow until he became <clears throat> never met. Very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. See, it's something about the seed that you sow during hard times. 
Some of us are going through some hard times right now. And it's something about the seed that you sow when you're going through some hard times. Jesus, my God, my God. I, I don't. I got to go. Yeah, we got to. Sometimes you got to sow seed when you can at least afford, afford to. It was a powerful demonstration of your faith. And it gives God a mighty opportunity to prove himself and to show himself strong on your behalf. This is the stuff that, 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 that I don't like to preach. Because some people, that's, that's, that's like all that they preach. And I don't want to, and the reason I'm preaching is because I don't want to deprive you of, of what God want to do in your life. And some of us come to church every Sunday and we don't give what's required. That's the tenth. He said the tithe and the offering. And some of us only do the tenth, but, but not the offering, not, not, not an additional seed. This is just what's required of me. Now, now what are you going to sacrifice? Let me say this. Let me say this. So, so it was one Sunday. Y'all know who you are, so I ain't going to look at you. It was one Sunday. I stopped the music and I began to talk about tithing as so I stopped the music because the Spirit of God was just speaking to me and I had to speak what the Spirit of God was speaking to me and I began to talk about tithing and, and, and I, I really went in on tithing and so somebody asked you know we had a really good conversation and really transparent conversation and they asked so is the church struggling for money because it's like the last couple of Sundays, I, I've heard you kind of go in there on tithing and when it was time to give. And so they, 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 they was being honest. They, didn't, they just didn't know, and they just wanted to know, like, are we in a financial rut in the church? That, are we trying to do something? And, and you talking about this, or you talking me, because it just seemed like that's, you know, that's really out of, not out of character, but a little out of character, because that ain't really how you flow and how you operate. And, and God is so awesome, because during that time, we were in the best financial state that we had ever been in as a church. Y'all don't have no church. Because I don't roll like that. I don't get down like that. It was, it's about you. God is blessing this church. God is blessing me. God is blessing what's around me. It's about you. And, and, and oftentimes, I've deprived because I sort of want to stay away from this This. All in prosper. I, I just because I understand how some people see it and they knock the church and they hit the church. But but th there's a place that we have to communicate this. And, and, and I operate by seed time and harvest time. And, and, and there's some things that I've seen God do in my life, and I don't want to keep you from receiving what God really wants to do in your life. There's some principles that, that I operate in, and, and I've been cheating you by not giving you some principles that I operate in, and, and, and God has done it for this church. He's done it for the nonprofit. He's done it for my life personally. He's done it for my family. There's some principles that you can apply to your life, and that God want to do some things for you. Now, now, whether you take it or not, that's on you. But it's my responsibility to give it. And if we're going to talk about adultery, homosexuality, fornications, the blessings of the Lord, the rain is coming, then we got to talk about everything. And regardless of how people have perverted it, you got to understand what thus says the Lord. And if it turns you off, then it turns you off. But this is the word of God. Woo. So, so just, and, and I, I don't, so some conversations, I, it's just between me and God, but I, I think it's, it's in some things that we do between me and me and God and amounts and all this. But I, but I think it's important that this 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 is how me and my family, we operate. So so let me let me share this with you. Since I've been saved, I've tithed, period. I had missed one time tithing, not because I got so much money, but it's just I've committed my life to seed time. And I committed my life to being obedient to God. And so. When times got rough, I didn't take my seed out of the ground because times got rough. Sometimes times get rough, and I told you on last week that the first thing that we cut off is God. First thing that we cut off is the church. Things get tough and things get hard, and, and the first thing we leave alone, man, it's the church. I got all of these things. I got family problems. I got baby mama drama. I got problems on my, on my job. I got problems with the father of my children. I got all these problems, and so because I have these problems, I'm going to 
bag away from, from the church. But because they're talking about repossessing my car, um, the church is the first entity that shot. When the word of God says, uh-uh, 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 Jamie, no, that ain't it. That ain't it, Jamie. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Jamie, bring your tithes to the storehouse so there may be food in my house. See if I won't open up a window of heaven and pour out a blessing that you have room enough to receive. <laughs> Jamie, listen, what I'm going to do in there, Jamie, I'm going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. I'm going to rebuke the enemy for your sake. I, I know it seems like things are falling apart, but, but keep on sowing. Keep on giving. Keep on trusting me. I, I know it seems like it ain't happening, but, but, but refuse to take your seed out of the ground. When, when times get hard, when troubles come, just say, look, that, look that, that is not an option. I am not taking my seed out of the ground. The widow woman had every reason and every, every thought process possible to, for her to take her seed out of the ground. Well, you know what? I might as well as it now. But not, that's not an option, God. What is it that you want me to do, God? What is it that you want me to sell, God? What is it that you want me to collect, God? How many doors do you want me to knock on, God? How many bases do you want me to get, God? What is it that you want me to do, God? That's this is not an option. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things going to be added to me. So if I got a downsize in my house, oh, I just cut some of y'all out. Since I got to get another car, oh, I'm just going off on y'all. Since I got to say I can't go out to eat every, oh, I, I'm, I'm tripping now. Since I can't have fast food this week, oh, I got to bring my food. Uh, I've never lived like that. Well, you got to say, you know what? Yeah, I got to be a good steward over God's resources, and not only does 10% belong to God, but all of it belong to God, and I have to be a good steward, and I'm giving God he us off of the top, period. So we've committed that we're going to give more percent every year of our lives. So where we started at 10%, so we don't know what's the percent next year. Because we have committed, and the reason I'm telling you this, I, 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 won't, I don't want nothing from you, I want something for you. I want you to understand that. This, this, is, this is for you. This is, I don't want to deprive because I've been deprived. It's, so every year we, we giving more. So I don't, well, what if we don't make more? We, we're giving more. What if it's a, we're, that's what we committing to. So it was one year and we were struggling. And not only did we tie that year, because I saw how some of my friends lived. And how they prayed about who they were giving to and how they were giving. And not only did they tithe, but they sold seeds in different nonprofits and sold seeds in the lives of different people. And I saw how extremely blessed they were. And I'm a real student. And I wanted some of that there. And, and, and I, I wanted, I mean, not just I wanted the blessings. I, I just, I want to be a giver. I understand seed time and harvest time. And I give up my, my, my time, my talent, and my treasures. And I just believe the word of God. And to see God actually do what he say he's going to do, even though sometimes it seems like he's not going to do it, to see him come through, man, I'm overjoyed. And so the, at the end of the year, we said, we're going to give to this nonprofit. We're going to give to this nonprofit. We're going to give to this nonprofit. We're going to give to this family. We're going to give to this person. We're going to give to this person. This, and there wasn't a whole lot because we, we wasn't rolling like that now. Just, but it was something. It was being open to who we're going to bless today, who, who food we're going to pay for today. Being in the grocery store, Angela, and say, well, you know what? If the spirit of the Lord put it on my heart to, to pay for something. Y'all ain't never heard me share this. To pay for somebody's groceries. Don't even look at how much it costs. Just look and say, I'm, I'm going to be a blessing. I'm going to pay whatever it is behind me. I'm paying for your grocery. When at the service station we pull up, I, I don't care what, how much gas you're getting. You just pay for it. Because when you give, it shall be given to you. Y'all don't want to have no church. Good measures, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. And I've seen God do it over and over and over and over and over again. So I, I don't do it just to receive a harvest. I do it being open to the spirit of God and out of obedience to God. And when I feel an unction, when I feel a tug in my heart to do it, we just do it. And I've seen him. But some of us are saying that, well, I, I ain't got much. The widow woman said, I ain't got nothing but this, this look, this look, this look. And the man of God said, well, get that look, that look, that look. And let's see what's going to happen with that look, that look, that look. And what God is saying, you got something to give. 
You got something to give. He said, you may not be rich. You may not be six figures. You may not make 50,000, whatever it is, but you have something to give. And I want you to give that little bit that you do have and allow me to multiply. You have a gift. You have a dream. You have a talent. You have a resource. You have money. There is something that you have that God won't. And when you give it to God, he going to do some things and, and turn it around. But you got to put it in the ground and say, God, I'm putting it in the ground. I'm not digging it up, God. Make it do what it do, God. Oh, my God. And when I put it in the ground, I got I to gotta, I gotta come back out here. And I got to see what's happening to the crop. Y'all don't have no church. I got to come back out here. And because when I put it in the ground, I'm not done to marry just because I put it in the ground. I got to work while I'm waiting. I got to work. And I got to start tilling some more. And I got to start cultivating the ground some more. That's, I got to start pulling some weed out of it. I got I to gotta start doing some stuff. The Bible let us know what Isaac was doing. He had reaped in this land that was barren. My God, it's so late, my God. Oh, God, it's so late. The farmer, listen, the farmer doesn't buy a field that's ready with the harvest, y'all. The farmer's harvest begins when he plants the seed in the ground many months before. And once he plant the seed in the ground, he got to work while he waiting. He got to cultivate it. He got to work it over. He got to water it. He got to dig around it. He got to do all of that while he's waiting on it to come up. So, so it's in the ground, so I can't just go and chill while it's in the ground. I got to go back, and I got I to gotta, I gotta work over it. I got to water it. I got to dig around it. I got to keep on working. I got I to keep my attention on this crop because I got I to gotta know that, that harvest time is coming, that it's going to come forward. Now, now, when you've done all of that, then you can chill. Then you can sleep. Then you can relax because then you can know that God is going to do exactly what he said that he's going to do. So the Bible let us know that after the fact, look at what this man did. Yeah, we, we look at this man did. Verse 16, then Abimelech said to Isaac, move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerah and settled there. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father, Abraham. And they was tripping in and, and, and they dug another well. And they was tripping in and they dug another well. Y'all don't have no church. And they was tripping and, and he dug another well. He dug five wells. Verse 24, the night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not be afraid for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of for the sake of my servant Abraham, Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent and there his servants dug a well because there was a famine in the land. And so how was he getting water? He used what God had given him to dig. And, and it was something that was happening. Some water was, was fertilizing, obviously what he was planting. So, so you got to keep on digging, even though you see harvest, you got to keep on working. You got to keep on working. And I got harvest, but it's not over with. I got to keep on digging, but, but, but I'm seeing the fruit of it. I got to keep on working because the enemy is going to try to come and overtake what God has done in your life. I got to keep on working. I got to keep on digging. I got to keep on cultivating. I got to keep on watering. I got to keep on moving. I cannot allow anything to shake me. I cannot allow anything to break me. I got to keep on moving because I got grind. I didn't just experience the harvest and sit down. He experienced the harvest. He was a rich man. After he became a rich man, he became a wealthy man. But he and his folks kept on digging until they was able to find rest. You got to keep on digging. You got to keep on working. You can't just wait. You got to work while you wait. You got to dig while you wait. God, I'm expecting a harvest, God. I'm trusting you to do what your word say that you are going to do, God. God, I'm going to give you this little bit that I do have, God. I ain't got nothing but a little bit, God. I didn't think that I had anything, God, but I got a mouthpiece, God. God, I got some acting in my body, God. God, I, I, I can type, God, really good, God. I can sing really good, God. I can serve really good. In other words, he said, there's something that you have and you're sitting on it. And how are you going to produce a harvest if you don't have anything in the ground you got to put it in the ground it's got to die and allow me to do what i do while it's underground i want you to reap a hundredfold if you sow sparingly you're gonna reap sparingly in other words if you give a little bit you're gonna reap a little bit he said if you sow my god he said i love a cheerful giver so i gotta sow i gotta keep on sowing i gotta keep on sowing we were sowing and and we weren't getting nothing we were sowing and we weren't getting nothing. I thought we weren't getting nothing. We was getting good health. We was getting strength. So I was just praising God for then. But I just 
just knew that he was going to do something. I just knew that something was going to happen. I wasn't getting frustrated and mad and discontent and tripping out with him and saying, he ain't did nothing yet. We still, she ain't got a job yet. We were still tithing with just one income. We had a new baby. We had a new house and she didn't have, and we had one income and we was not making a lot of money. But we said, you know what, what's going to go away is this. What's going to go away is that. If we got a pawn the car, whatever we got to do, we're going to give God his off the top. And I'm here to tell you, God continued to bless year after year after year after year when we didn't see the harvest like we thought that we was going to see it. One year it came. We were like, my God, my God. And when it came, we didn't stop digging. When it came, we didn't give up. When it came, we didn't just chill. We said every year we're going to keep on giving because we believe that if we give, it shall be given back unto us. So give and allow God to give it back to you, Moses. What's in your hand, Moses? What's in your hand, woman? What's in your hand? What's in your hand, widow? What's in your hand, Samson? What's in your hand? God want to take the very thing that you got in your hand. He want to take the very thing that you got in your possession and he wants you to give it to him. He wants you to sow it. He wants you to put it in the ground and let him do what he want to do so you can experience a harvest that he want to give you. Sometimes you're not getting what God has required you to get because you're not sowing what he's required you to sow. So we're not talking about just, hey, you know, I'm just going, I'm just going, this and I'm just going to do, no, 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 no. I'm going to do it cheerfully. I'm going to do it with some swag. I'm going to give. I'm going to sow. I'm going to bless some folks with this little bit. When I just work part time, I, whatever I got to cut back, whatever, I'm going to give. I'm going to give because I believe in the principle of sowing and reaping. Come on, y'all. Give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet.